My name is James Fagan Tate, but I like being called Jimmy. Um, and I'm 61 years old. I'll be 62 very soon. Born in 1955 in Cornwall, Ontario. I uh, am in the theatre. I work in the theatre as a theatre maker, as an actor, director, playwright. And I started doing that when I was about seven years old um, with, um, in puppetry at the local library in Cornwall. Cornwall is considered the city between two smells. It was a city that had pulp and paper at one end and a uh, uh, nylon factory at the other end. And there's a cancer that comes out of Cornwall, Ontario called the Cornwall Cancer up in the Ottawa Civic. My mom was 40 when she had me. So they were 40 when they had me and they were 35 when they had my oldest sister. So they had four kids back to back over five years. One of my sisters had ilia uh, had um, uh, scoliosis, a curvature of the spine, and she had to have a serious operation. And I had chronic ulcerative colitis. So the two of us spent lots of time in hospital. And so as a child, I spent four years out of ten in hospital, like six months in, three months out, five months in. So my upbringing was French or by my schooling. And then when I got to high school, I moved into a school that was called École Secondaire Saint-Laurent High School. So St. Lawrence High School, ostensibly. And in high school, it was French and English. Like they always cohabited, like two, two different pedagogies were working side by side. And around the time of the FLQ, the Francophone communities in Ontario were begging for their own uh, institutions. Where there were where there were where there weren't many, so they were demanding a separate school, a separate French school, and what happened was they split the school into two shifts, and it polarized everybody. So, for example, I one of my best friends, Paul Paquet, when he found out that he said to me one day over the phone, he said, uh, "You're going to be subscribing to the French school next year, the French shift." aren't you next year? And I went, no, I'm going to the English shift. And he said, well, then we can't be friends anymore. And I said, but, but that's my, my mother language. That if, like, why aren't you subscribing to the English? Because your mother language is French. So it only makes sense. And he said, but we, we politically, we need this move. Um, I got away as quickly as I could and moved to Toronto and um, studied theater at, I mean, I had a variety of things happen, but I studied theater at Ryerson Theater School for a couple of years, and then started doing theater in uh, Toronto. As soon as I got my equity card, I wrote to Jacques Lecoq, and I got into that school, and I went off to it when I was about 29. And I moved to um, Paris. When I set off to go to Paris, I missed my plane because I'd never flown before. At the age of 29, I'd never flown. I mean, I was a fairly blinkered individual. And anyway, it took me a very roundabout way to get there. I was headed there directly and I ended up getting a plane to Boston and then from Boston to London and then the train to Folkestone and from Folkestone a boat over to Boulogne-sur-Mer and then the train from Boulogne-sur-Mer to Gare du Nord. And I, and I thought I'd made the biggest mistake of my life. I was like, I didn't know where, what world I was in. There was, I remember walking off the train and there was somebody playing, sitting and playing a pipe over a basket and there was a snake, there was a snake charmer in Gare du Nord the night I arrived and I was like, I don't know where I am. So in one way the culture, the being in Paris opened my eyes to life and the school, Jacques Lecoq, opened my life, my eyes to theatre practice and, and just new languages of theatre practice, new vocabulary. And then I came back to Canada, you know, and then I, first of all, I had moved to England and I spent nine months in England working with a group of people who had come out of a school called the East 15. And at the end of nine months, although we did a great piece that toured around that went up to Edinburgh and we, we had a lovely piece of theatre that we created, I wanted to go home. I, I needed to go home to Canada and I decided that going home was going back to Canada as opposed to going back to Paris, which was like the place for me. When I went, went to Paris, I felt for the first time at home. I felt that 
I wasn't judged as a gay man. I wasn't like there was all sorts of things that didn't exist in that culture that existed in my culture, particularly going from Cornwall, a fairly redneck um, hockey playing city to for a, a, a you know a, I was a gender nonconformist from the moment I was born and then and, and then grew into a gay man and whatever whatever and so um, almost immediately I got a job out at the Caravan Farm Theatre in BC. Nick Hutchinson is a, a director and he came from England and he's Dame Peggy Ashcroft's son and Dame Peggy was one of the great sort of Shakespeare actors out of the Royal Court Theatre and she was one of the creating actors of the Royal Shakespeare Company and he said come to the caravan next year offered a job to Holly and I and we said how much and he told us the price and she said not on your life and I said oh, sign me up so I went off to the caravan based on this this workshop and I got on a bus with my friend Randy Helmers who was also cast this woman that I started working with for like six months only we got on a bus in Toronto and three and a half days later we were in Armstrong, BC. The bus station was the laundromat in Armstrong, BC and she lay down on the pavement with her head on her duffel bag and I went to the phone they said to us, when you get to Armstrong, get off the bus, phone us and we'll come and pick you up. And honestly, five, maybe even longer minutes or ten minutes later, the phone picks up and this guy goes, hello, and I go, is this the Caravan Farm Theatre? And he goes, I don't know. I'm a contractor, I'm a builder, and I've been hired to build this mudroom onto this building out here at this place, but I'm not sure what the place is called. And I said, well, it's the Caravan Farm Theater, it's a, a th summer theater, and we just come off a bus from three and a half days, and we were told if we phoned this, I said, is there anybody around? He went, no. And I said, he said, where are you? And I said, we're in the Armstrong at the, 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 um, Laundromat, and he said, I'll come get you. So he came and picked us up. This, con this guy who was hired to build the mudroom on the cook shack, and he came and he picked us up, and he was very jolly, this fellow named Will. And he was our, our entry into life at the caravan, which was very typical. So we, dr and we drove to the caravan. It took us about 15 minutes from Armstrong, and we're driving down the, 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 this road, and he stops in this area that looks like like it looks it just looks like third world like everything else looks bad around there but when he landed at the caravan i i turned to him and I, or i said to him why have you stopped and he said we're here that night they finally came out of the woodwork after we had arrived after will had dropped us there and nick said nick and aubin the stage manager said we'll take you around to show you your digs and there's two trailers left you look at them and you decide which one you want to live in. So they took us around to the first one and it was like a bomb had hit it. It was, there was a part of the wall was falling off. And so it was wide open to nature, to wasps that were vis very visible. And it was a disaster. And Randy started crying and she grabbed my arm and she said, promise me you'll take this one, promise me you'll take this one on our way over to the next trailer. And I said, okay, Randy, I'll take it. And I was like, this is going to be the worst summer of my life. And then we went to the next trailer. And as we saw it, she said, no, promise me you'll take this one. So I lived in the second one we saw, which was worse than the first one. And yeah, I had a beautiful, had a beautiful time, you know, like, and, and, and becoming a part of a community and then good things about that and horrible, horrible things about that, like no boundaries. And I mean, you talk about no boundaries, it was like you didn't know what, there was no notion of what the rules were or anything, you know. Paul and Nance were these remarkable activists from Montreal who moved out west at a certain point, um, but they were creating, they had a beautiful um, magazine in Montreal, like a, a, like a, like, it was like the activist magazine, but I mean, art activism, you know, so anything that was taboo, Nons and Paul were right there in the, in the middle of getting it out there. And they moved out west and to Victoria or to the island, and I, uh, I might not have all the details. And then they created this puppet theater that toured and did activist uh, puppetry. And they had a, a small company of people, maybe eight, and it was growing. And Nick became a part of that, so he became the predominant director.
the, the company was growing and they were touring everywhere. Alberta, Ontario, California. Like this company went everywhere. And with people who were like uh, hippies and musicians and cowboys all together on the road. And they toured and they didn't have a home. They would have winter quarters. And uh, one of the winter quarters was, the, the last winter quarter they got was the Caravan Farm Theater. I came out to the caravan and then I, I ended up in Vancouver and then there was a period where I, I chucked it all. I was so disenchanted with the theater and with myself in the theater. And so I got out of theater for two years. I moved back to Toronto and I became a bilingual receptionist. And then I ended up in, in Vancouver for good and then I decided to become part of the theater scene in Vancouver and just to sort of like formally just audition for those specific shows so then I did a, a series of plays as an actor with with the um, the arts club and Bart on the Beach and Touchstone and like just did that for and, and New World and did that for maybe five years until I started almost completely separately directing at the very same time I um, I was told that I had emphysema serious uh, uh, lung function, dis like my lung function is very, very low. And so I had to quit smoking or I had a year to live. I sort of radically in my early 50s uh, stopped all of the unhealthy sort of, or what I consider unhealthy things that I thrived on before. Like I had energy for everything because of the cigarettes and the coffee and the booze and the like, and the, and the, the the marijuana and etc cetera, etc cetera. and it was like starting from scratch in my 50s and now I'm in a like I feel like I'm in a great place like I know how to live again